Hello everyone, Josh Kerr here. Today I'm going to be showing you how I use field recordings and implement sound design. One of the things that excites me about being a sound artist is that nearly everything around me is an opportunity to create art. Part of the process is just the adventure of exploring new spaces and devices that have within themselves a new individual sound. Being a resident in Los Angeles, I make a point to go for walks every day. These walks are really for the search of new sounds. On one of these walks, I found a vintage word processor called the Brother WP2200. These machines go anywhere from $60 to $150 online in working condition. So I saw this as a perfect opportunity to take this thing home, plug it in, see if it made any noise. After lugging home this nearly 50 pound machine about a half a mile from my house, I plugged it in and was surprised that not only did it turn on, but it had ink in the printer. I printed some nonsense. The floppy drive did not work, but still made some noise. So I decided to make a track for my new album with this machine. <laughs> And since I'm showing you how to create sound design in this tutorial, I thought I would also take the opportunity to create a full sound pack that I'll be offering for free and can be downloaded via my website or Patreon. Here's how I did it. So what do you need for a project like this? A recorder of any kind and a way to get it on your computer. For this project, I used the Brother WP2200, an old Zoom H4 that I've had since like 2007, an SM57, a simple condenser microphone, and a homemade contact microphone. My approach is just to start playing with the instrument, see what kind of sounds you can get out of it, see if you can find something new, try many different methods. I always like to use the obvious, some experimental techniques, using different mallets, using a bow. Once you've collected a group of sounds, just start sampling. So, I would like to show you how I made a few things out of this. First thing was I made these cool subtones out of the printer cover, which I was bowing. And I dropped it right into here. I also made, I think, an octave worth of tones in the sound pack that I'm going to be giving you guys. So, it's already kind of sampled there for you in a keyboard form. You can just drop them or you can do your own thing with them. But this is the sound. Yeah. Right? But if you take that, put it down in an octave. And then give it some reverb. We have this really nice low subby tone and you can do other cool things with them but that's how i made that sound okay how about something a little more experimental so i took a recording of the printer recorded from the contact mic and i just looped a small little section of it here Very simple, right? So now what I started with was not this beginning here. It was actually here because I wanted to bring out the harmonics. So I put an EQ on it. And as you can see, 
I tuned it to certain partials of the harmonic series within that sound. So. Doesn't sound like much. But when you add a subfilter boost and a delta modulator, yeah, you get this real harsh noise. But I wanted to go just a little bit further and make that sound full. So what I did was added plugo fuzz and a stereo faker, a gate. And then this randomizer over here on a flanger, but I'm going to show you how to do that. So, okay, now we're almost there. So, what I did was add this gate to get rid of just the little bit of the end there of each of the attacks, so you get this real kind of in and out type of sound. Right, so it makes it even sound more like the typewriter again, which it originally was. Now we have this device randomizer over here on a flanger. This is something I like to do a lot. What you do is you open any effect you want. In this case, I used a flanger. And then you open what is called a device randomizer. And as soon as you press map, and then you press the header, it'll immediately start randomizing the pitches over here. Or not the pitches, but the parameters. And so that's something I like to do. And you can adjust the frequency of uh, the modulation and the smoothing and the speed and stuff like that. And so that's what I added to this. Now I did the same thing over here using a condenser microphone of a recording. Right? And so in this one, I added Rough Rider, a Mega Muff, Delay, a Mutated Texturizer, and then a very harsh EQ, and then a Gate. So, at this point, these were my two samples that I'm using mainly. Over here, I created resample tracks. And I recorded myself improvising with those effects on and off, and then created a whole series of them, right? Now, if you don't know about clip following, you can definitely look it up on YouTube. I'll put some sort of link for you to check out to learn how to do it. But basically what you do is you select all the clips in one track. You can see here we have eight. Quantization, I'm choosing none because I want them to follow at random at 1 16th note. And when I say at random, it means it's going to choose any file within that track including itself. This one over here, if you choose other, you can choose anything except for itself. So when we have it at a 16th note, we're at 105, so this is what happens. Yeah. And so I did this here, then I created one more resample, and I resampled this. So 
I just did the process again to create even more randomness. <laughs> And that's how I made the noise section of this album. So for live performance, it's actually fun. You can turn these things on and off. You can have effects. As you can see, there's no effects on these because I recorded them with effects on them. But you can keep adding effects. So you can turn them on, off, mute. <laughs> So I hope this gave you some insight into how much you can get out of such a small resource. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial, and if you have any questions about this sound pack, or if you like this channel, please subscribe and leave a comment below. If you are curious about the sound pack and you would like to try it, you can download it for free on my Patreon. All of the links are in the description, including the music I used in the video, the plugins, the gear list, and the album cover design. I would like to leave you with one last thought. Most of the time I hear people say, well, I'd like to make a recording of this idea I have, but I don't have a nice mic or recorder or these are all just excuses. If you have a phone, you can make recordings. You can buy an old tape player from the Goodwill. You can even sample off the internet. My point is, when you have an idea, do it immediately. If it is too large of a project to realize your idea immediately, then do something constructive that moves you closer towards your goal, no matter what gear you have. And always remember that an artist is defined by what they do, not what they say. <laughs>